I'm still trying to wake up right now. It's in the morning, 7 a.m. I just got up from bed. So there's no time to dilly dally. I have a big important update to share with all of you that's coming to Arc Nights Global. This update is gonna be super enjoyable for old players, and I think it's even more impactful for new players. I'm speaking about those that haven't joined the game yet, or those that are just new to the game. Maybe you joined like three months ago, four months ago, or maybe even just a week ago, right? This is a super good update that a lot of you are are gonna enjoy. The update that I'm speaking of is the combat terminal update and this brings two main huge changes that I know all of you are wanting to see. So let me cover all of the details together with you right now. The update is most likely predicted to drop on the Friday of this week or if not the Tuesday of next week at latest. Now this update is a user interface update. This isn't about the event that's coming just yet. Yostar have yet to put any information about what's the next event because I think they know themselves that players are curious as to what's the next event and they're purposely teasing it to a later date. And I think most likely when I post this video, the update of the next event will probably be released already. So when I'm filming this, I do not know what's the next event, alright? Some of the images I'm going to show you later of the combat terminal update will have pictures of a walk in the dust. But don't be confused that the next event is a walk in the dust. We do not know. It could be preluding lights, it could be a walk in the dust, it could be even any other event, just not CC just yet because they need to put a, like a CC teaser way earlier. So we shall see how it plays out. But over here, we're just gonna talk about what in the world is this combat terminal. So the first part of combat terminal is talking about the support system. The support system in Arc Knights has been historically one of the worst support systems that I've seen in games. Like there are other gacha games that have support systems that you can borrow units and operators from your friends as well. But this system that we have in AK is quite frustrating to be honest. Right now in the game, you have like this list of friends that you can get the operators from. Sometimes it's not even specific as to the number of people you see on your support screen. You could be seeing um, six of your friends, three of your non-friends. Sometimes you see eight, sometimes you see nine of your friend stuff, and then your stranger side is still gonna be like three. So it's very inconsistent and you can't really pick out the operators that you want so easily. Once more, when you hit refresh, there's a limit of 10 refreshes. And if you use up that limit, then you have to wait for this 12 hour reset to get 10 refreshes again. And if you are urgently wanting a certain operator, then you need to go into the stages, spend your sanity, do a refresh, and then go back and hope that you get the operators that you want. And this has been a very wasteful experience. Like for myself, when I film my videos, or even other people that I know who have been wanting to get certain support operators, we just keep going in a loop of spending our sanity, and it's been a very painful time. So, this new support system is gonna help every one of you. Even when you have no friends in your account, this system is gonna be a savior for you. So let me explain. Now the new support system has divided the support operators into eight class. So as you can see on the left side, you have the eight classes and each of the class will show you nine operators that you can choose from to use as a support operator. So nine times eight, every time you enter the support system, now you're gonna see 72. 72, wait, wait, I can't count. 72 operators that you can pull up from the support system. And that's already a huge exciting thing to hear about. You know, so many choices that you can pick. But then how about the refresh system? Is it still that 10 refresh thing? No, gone are the days where you only have a 10 refresh limit. Let me explain to you how it works now. This is still the same. The support list is refreshed whenever you click uh, the refresh button, all right? It will refresh all the 72 operators. And if you clear a stage with a support operator, then the list will refresh as well. A bit of a difference from the previous time, I think, is that if you lose a stage, so you spend sanity and you lose a stage, you cannot refresh the support operator list. You must have cleared a stage and then the list will refresh for you and you can get some new picks that you want. But the plus point is that if let's say you clear a stage that doesn't even spend sanity, so I'm talking about things like contingency contract stage, okay, then you took a support operator and then you brought them in and you won that stage. The support list will also refresh. So actually this is a very impactful change. Now that even no sanity stages can allow you to refresh your support list. Now an even better change, there's no more 10 refresh limit every 12 hours. It's gone, you can live without it already. Instead, whenever you refresh, each refresh will have a short cooldown interval which increases after each refresh. So what I mean is that when you hit the refresh button, there's gonna be a timer that shows up, all right? The timer, when it first shows up, will be refreshing for one second. After one second, it will be three seconds. After three seconds, it's 10, 30, 60. I don't know what's the next number after 60. I think it's uh, 120, meaning two minutes. Then I think it might go up to five minutes and 10 minutes. 
uh, I don't know if it goes beyond 10 minutes, but a lot of time people don't need to go that far. Uh, but still, there's this timer that will keep increasing the more you refresh for operators. And I think this is a little bit less annoying. But then you might be thinking, okay, if I hit, keep hitting refresh and it goes too high, then what am I supposed to do? I think just now I said that there's a number beyond 10 minutes, right? Like t after 10 minutes, you need to experience an even higher cooldown. No, that's not it. Actually, 10 minutes is the last cooldown timer. And the reason for that is that the cooldown interval, so that whole seconds increasing thing, will reset after 10 minutes of no refreshes. So the 10 minutes cooldown timer will already force you to not refresh. But okay, let's say you refresh two times, like one second, three seconds, and all that kind of thing. Okay, Once you don't refresh any operators for 10 whole minutes, then it will start to go backwards, and then you will refresh again, one second, three second, 10 second. So that means you don't have to wait a full 12 hours or like the entire day to get your refreshes going again. Just go and do your homework, go and do your own uh, job, and then once you come back uh, 10 minutes later, you, you can refresh your support operators for all you want. And it's not one refresh, it's like you can refresh five times in one go. So this is super exciting. I'm really looking forward to use more support operators in the game, and this is also an opportunity for me to try some of the support operators that I may not have been able to from my friends. Now, within the page of nine, the friend support operators and the system recommended operator. So system recommended operator is the ones that comes from people that that you have not added in the game, both of these type of operators will show up in that screen of nine. So you might have a mix of, let's say, six of your friends that appears there and then three of the people that you have never added before. You might be thinking, then if I get support recommended operator, then won't it just be the annoying situation of skill rank one skills that I can only use since that's what it has been in the previous time. Now this has changed, it's gone. Now, if let's say you're borrowing operators from a person that you have never added before, the maximum skill rank that it will show up with is skill rank 7. So that means if the person have already built their operator to skill rank 7, or maybe they built it M1, M2, M3, and you've never added them before, it will now show up as skill rank 7. Now you can't go about complaining, oh, I don't have this operator, I don't have that operator for like my strategies, that kind of thing. You can now borrow a Blaze at skill rank 7. You can borrow a Surter at skill rank 7. And also, there's no limit to the level as well for the people that you've added. So if they have the operator at E2, you're going to get the operator to use at E2 for you. And that means there's finally easier time to borrow in the game. It's going to be so much more enjoyable now. So I think a lot of you are already liking the sound of what I'm speaking of. So when you hit the refresh button, all of these operators will change. All right, the friend operators that you have and the, uh, the recommended support operator, they're both going to have a clean sweep each time you click refresh. When you take a support operator from your friend, then you're just going to immediately borrow that operator. But when you click on the person that you've never added before, you're going to enter a profile file that shows their list of support operators and then you can only choose the one that the system recommended you to take. So for example, if they have those three operators but he only put AF Fiala, then yeah, you can only choose that AF Fiala at skill rank 7. Alright, I think that's it to mention about the support system. It's so damn good. It's just way too quality of life to go about. I feel like the video might have been very long but I'm gonna have to tell you that the second part of the video is equally as good as whatever I've just told you in the front. So the second part is talking about this combat terminal. The combat terminal is a whole main menu change that is coming to Arc Knights. Now go into your stages screen where you can see all this user interface of the main story, the supply stages, the chip stages, annihilation and whatnot, alright? Because you're never gonna see this layout of stuff again. It's gonna be a whole overhaul this time and actually this overhaul is really bringing about great changes that's gonna help you guys in the gameplay. So let me explain what happens. This is the very front screen of the combat terminal now. You can see that there's seven buttons at the bottom and each of the buttons have their own names. Uh, I don't know what's the English translation yet, so I might be chopping up the actual name of the words, so please don't mind me. These are just predicted uh, word changes that they will put when it comes. So the first button at the bottom left is the main interface or the main menu. This is the page to do all sorts of reminders as to what you should be doing in Arc Nights or what you should be looking out for when you are playing the game. The left side and the middle side. Those are the attention boxes. Attention boxes will put the current event that's ongoing. So for example, if let's say you have a preluding lights event that's happening right now, or a under tides event, then it's gonna show up on one of these two boxes and you can click on it and enter the event stages immediately. Then it will also show the current story that's being played. So right now it's chapter eight, right? Then you have the ability to access chapter eight immediately. If you have not gotten to chapter eight yet, no worries. It will show up with your latest cleared chapter. So if you're at chapter four or chapter five, then it will show up on the screen with chapter four, chapter five. This still feels generic. The good stuff is on the right side. The top right is a to-do list. 
So the to-do list will show two main things. I don't think it shows anything else apart from these two. I might be wrong, but I, it should be only these two things. The first thing that it will show is annihilation. Every week, we're all trying to farm up our random limit. And sometimes we might be a little bit forgetful as to have we already filled up the limit before we go about our uh, daily stuff. So this front main menu screen is going to remind you that you have to do annihilation. It's going to put the random counter right there on the top left. Only when you have filled up to 1,700, 600 or 800, whichever that you're at right now, then it will disappear from the to-do list. So when you fill the cap, then it will be removed from the to-do list and you know very well that you have completed annihilation for the week. Isn't that a great thing? Now you don't have to click on annihilation to see what's your random limit. It's in the front page. It's gonna tell you what's the progress and it's gonna bug you a little bit to tell you that, hey, you got randoms, free stuff to take. As we all Asians say, free stuff must take. That's the first one. The second one is contingency contract. So you know how the contingency contract has this like daily refresh that goes on? They are always changing the stages that you can play every single day and it's only one stage per day. If let's say there's a stage that you have never cleared before, you are able to get some material boxes and contract bounties from completing them. And for some of you who are new to the game, there are definitely some daily stages that you've never played. There were daily stages that came from CC0, 1, 2, 3 that have already been deleted and they can only be assessed when you are playing this like practice mode of contingency contract. So if the current stage of the day is a contingency contract stage that you have not beaten, so let's say the stage today is a broken path, right? This has been removed from the future CCs already. The to-do list will update over there to tell you that today's daily map is broken path and you have not completed this daily stage before. This is so damn good because it's going to be helping new players to know what they have to do and then how they can allocate their time to do this and that and all that sort of stuff. And even old players as well. If let's say you missed out on a particular stage before, then you get the reminder accordingly to tell you that, hey, you might want to go and play this stage right now. So I am very happy that they brought this sort of change for us to experience. Oh, one more thing about the main menu interface I've got to mention. At the bottom right of the main menu interface, it's going to show you the last most recent stage that you're at. Yep, so if you've been farming 1.7 or CE5 or like any of the stages that you are playing at the moment, your most recently played stage will show up at the bottom right. So if you're farming that stage, you can easily just click on that and go in, straight away play it. This is going to be so freaking helpful. I'm very certain I'm going to use this a lot and I think all of you are going to as well. So enjoy it to the fullest. That's just talking about the first button. The second button is the main theme. So the main theme is the story stages. But the story stages are no longer sorted in like this panning left to right kind of thing where we had chapter 0 to chapter 8. Now, they split the stories up into arcs. I think it's chapter 0 to 3. They are put into one arc of the game and then chapter 4 to 8 is another arc or is it 4 to 6 another arc and 7 8 another arc. I think maybe there are three arcs in the game right now. Uh, I'm not very certain. I didn't exactly want to confirm this part but anyways the stories are sorted into arcs just like how it would be in an anime, uh, in a manga or actually even a drama that you might be watching. So this is very very good. Um, in the future when we get chapter 9 even chapter 9 is going to go into a new arc of its own and this helps to segregate the story as well as to do a little bit of a less scrolling. Imagine if we have 20 chapters then in the future you're gonna log in you enter the main menu then you go zero you must scroll all the way to the left for the chapter 20. Now the only downside to the new arc sorting kind of thing is that it takes a little bit of an extra click. Now you click on the main team button then you must click on the particular arc then you must click on the chapter then finally you click into the stages itself. So there's a little bit of an extra click but it shouldn't be too big of a problem all right it's something that we'll get used to and honestly the arc sorting is just a way to clean up the game right now okay the next two buttons the third button and the fourth button i don't know what they're translated to uh, the third button might be called intermezzi or it could be called interlude it could also be called side story but i honestly don't know what's the naming we'll have to see when it drops but let's call it interlude for now and the fourth button um, it might be called biography if not it could also be called side story as well so for now butchering the naming a bit but let's call it interlude and side story so third button interlude interlude will show ongoing and past critical side stories so those that are very important to the law of the game uh, is very very deep and heavy then it's even connected to the main story of the game then they will be parked under interlude so some examples will be dark knight's memoir it's a very very impactful story for the entire law of arc knights and in the future, two more events will also be added under this, which is A Walk in the Dust and Under Tides. Then what about the other side stories? They will be parked under Biography. 
So side stories like Granny and the Night's Treasure, uh, Heart of Surging Flame, and Code of Brawl will be parked under side stories. Now I just realized I probably did not explain this very clearly. Cookie, why are you bringing up old events and you know what the coming back into Arc Knights, what are you talking about? Yes, all of these old events that we played before, once they have experienced a rerun already, they're gonna get directly added into the side story or interlude of the game. And that means you can replay all of their stages. They all had original stages, original bosses and enemies for you to play and experience. You can get to play with them all over again. And isn't that such an exciting thing to do? Because there's more stages for you to practice now and a little bit like more content for you to play around with. So I am looking forward because now I can make interesting guide videos or even like uh, playthrough videos with the help of these new stages. Of course, a downside to these events coming back though is that the material rates of the events are super nerfed. If there's a particular event that you remember that's very good for Loxico or Grindstone, so for example, the Granny event was very good for these two, right? It's gonna be worse or if not just about the same as the story stages. So don't farm the event stages ever. There's no reason to anymore. If they're put as a permanent thing that you can play, that means they don't have a good farming rate already. The fact that you can play these event stages permanently also means that there's no more event currency, there's no event mission, there's no event store for you to go about playing anymore. The only purpose of playing these events is that if you haven't cleared them. So all of the stages still have a first clear OP reward. If you already cleared the stage, there's no first clear rewards. If you didn't clear the stage, the main thing that you're looking for is the OP. So some of you told me things like, oh, I suffered in the previous Dark Knight's Memoir rerun, I couldn't do DMMO, I couldn't do DMEX6, or maybe you remember far back to something like Obsidian Festival, and there's a, uh, I don't know what Obsidian Festival's numbers were, I think maybe it's OF8, so yeah, maybe you didn't clear OF8, and then you want to go back to that to get the OP. The OP is still sitting down there, waiting for you to get. So that's a huge bonus, and new players and old players alike, you can get that OP refill that you've been looking for. But if you click everything, uh, no free OP for you, just the ability to replay the stages if you want to, alright? One interesting thing I must mention is that certain stages do not spend sanity anymore. So I think Obsidian Festival stages, if you remember there's like a ticket stage that we can play, I think those four stages are apparently free, uh, no sanity to be spent. But every other stages like the Granny event, the COB, Code of Brawl and Dark Knight's Memoir, you still have to spend sanity for them. So recap again, if you play the event stages, there's only two things that you can get. Uh, first clear OP reward and materials, but materials that are not farmable. You should only play once to first clear and leave, go back to usually farming your story stages and the current event. You might be thinking, what about the event exclusive rewards? So things like the welfare operator, Ceylon, um, the, the furnitures that we have, that kind of thing. Well, there is an ability to get these welfare operators and furniture next time in the game. Um, this will come together with the Chowter update or the Dorsalus holiday update. Over there, what happens is that they have this function called the Record Restore. If you've never collected a Max Pot Welfare Operator, or you didn't collect all the furnitures from the event, you have the ability to assess that button, and the requirement for you to get all the things is that you've beaten all the stages in that event. So the first operator that received this update was Ceylon. The instructions for Ceylon was, I think, to clear every stage, so up to OF8 and up to OFEX. 4 or OFEX8, I don't even remember what's the last number, but basically complete all the stages. Then they will grant you a Ceylon and all the furnitures that were tied to that event. Uh, some questions that you guys may have. If I have Ceylon, Max Pot, and all furnitures, do I get to do this record restore? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, you cannot re-obtain stuff, don't expect free tokens that you can trade for yellow certificates, alright? You already got that last time. Um, if I have a Pot 2 Ceylon and I have half of the furnitures, do I get like a pot 6 Ceylon? So do I get 6 tokens and then uh, all the furniture set again? Nope. Record Restore will fill in whatever that you're missing. If let's say you have a pot 2 Ceylon, you still need 4 more pots, the Record Restore will give you those 4 pots. And you said that you have half the furniture missing, then it will give you all that furniture. What if I have no Ceylon? I have no furniture. Then Record Restore will give you everything. Straight off. Clear all the stages, you get one whole full set for you to use. So this is very very nice, don't you think? I think this is great. New players rejoice with me. This is such a fun way to play Arc Knights now. If you have played at least one stage of the event, you can assess everything. So for example, if you've only played DM1 and you never played DM2, DM3, don't worry, enter DM1, Right away when you see that side story, you can continue from where you left off. So you can continue playing DM2, DM3, DM4. And if you clear everything, then all the stages will come back to you available for you to play. If you've never even played one stage of the event before, maybe you haven't even joined Arc Knights at that point in time, then you have to unlock the event. But don't worry, you're not locked behind like a paywall, that kind of thing, it's completely free. Let me explain to you how it goes. At the top right of both the side story and the interlude menu, there is this thing called event crystals. If you then say there's an event that you have never played before, 
you need to unlock the event by entering like the go button and entering the go button requires you to spend one event crystal once you spend the event crystal you are completely okay to play the event permanently from there on so for example you never played granny spend one event crystal you can play granny forever now there's a limit of two event crystals that you hold at each point in time if you spend one or two event crystals don't worry as well you can refill them in fact every weekly reset so every monday of the game the event crystal will top up by one so this is a very interesting way to help new players to keep refilling their content so if let's say you're completely new you started like one week ago or one month ago then you can spend the event crystal uh, you can you you'll probably spend like two event crystals up and you can play the granny rerun you can play heart of surging flame and next week you can unlock Darkline's Memoir. Next week again, you can unlock like the last code of Raw that you have never played. So this is gonna be super, super good. I really wanna hear the happiness that some of you have towards this feature. Is this a, a thing that you've been wanting to hear? Please let me know down in the comments. I'm actually bawling with excitement right now. <laughs> One last thing to mention about the interlude and the side stories. In the future, we're gonna get more rerun events that we can play. So things like TOW, Gavia rerun, and other things as well. When those event reruns are completed, then they will get added permanently for us to experience in interlude and side stories so it's like they, they'll always get archived after they all experience a rerun and that's gonna be super good for even future new players and old players like ourselves and where we can go back and play those stages again oh yes i do need to mention as well one of the rerun events that's gonna come back for cn um, in like their next update is the operational intelligence rerun i don't know if they're rerunning the stages but uh, apparently it is promised that Flamebringer is coming back. So you can rejoice together with me that Flamebringer is going to be added to the record restore function that I told you and it might be tagged together with all the operational intelligence stages uh, getting archived as well. So that's really an update that we all want to see in global. Flamebringer no longer a true limited. But you're going to have to wait for like 7 months for that update to drop. We're very far away from seeing Flamebringer and AK global. Final points of the interface to talk about. The 5th button, the 6th button, and the 7th button. Uh, the 5th button is Supply Stages, the 6th button is Annihilation, and Contingency Contract as the 7th button. I'm not going to explain too much about Annihilation and Contingency Contract because they are pretty much the same idea. Annihilation has a little bit of a design change, but it's not going to be too confusing. You'll get used to it, it's going to still be as helpful for you. And Supply Stages has quite a different look to it. So basic material stages like your LND, EXP, uh, Purchase Vouchers, that sort of thing, those stages are merged together with the chip stages in one screen now. So it's very nice to see this one size fit all menu that you can easily look at from here on. And as per normal, uh, the top of the screen will show the day of the week. So you can then clearly see which stages you can assess now and which stages that you can't. I do really like the design look of this particular menu itself. And yes, I look forward to seeing it come for us. Other than that, I think I've covered everything about this combat terminal update. I do hope that you guys enjoyed what you have just listened to and really please let me know how you feel towards this coming change. In my next video, I will then talk about the next event. Like I said, most likely the event teaser might have been posted up when I post up this video or it's going to be posted up tomorrow. Once I see what that event is, I will tell you guys all about its details and then also give you guys a bit of a brief on the updated predicted timeline that will happen for Arknight's EN. And if not, I hope to see you in the next video. Alright, bye bye everyone. 7.